welcome to the lecture 21 of group theory so last lecture we have seen uh, silos theorem first we have seen the stronger version of silos theorem that we discussed in the class and in the last video number 20 we have seen another proof of silos theorem first silo theorem so two proofs already we have seen and second proof uh, that we have seen last time is based on uh, class equation as i said but we did not discuss in the class so it's just a video for you to watch it's it's an easy proof and i hope you'll all understand it if you have any difficulties we'll meet in some tutorial sessions uh, to discuss about that proof but uh, it is very similar to what we have seen uh, all the class equation proofs uh, Cauchy's theorem general version it is very similar to that so I hope uh, you will watch that video and you will go through it okay so now we proceed further so uh, before we get to the next part of Silo's theorem that is second Silo's theorem uh, we need to see some preliminaries so let uh, So let G be a group and suppose H is a subgroup of G. G be a group, H uh, be a subgroup of G. And suppose uh, we have an element A belongs to G. I'm sorry, unable to write here. Okay, let me write in the next next line. My video is uh, blocking me. So, and A is um, some fixed element in G. So then, A H A inverse is also a subgroup of G. H A inverse is a subgroup of G. Of course, A H A inverse is non-empty because uh, if H is non-empty, H has one element, so A H A inverse has an element. H has identity, so this also has an identity element. So H E belongs to H, so we have A E A inverse, which is nothing but E. So non-empty is uh, clear, so we do not specify that. So we verify. So exercises. I do give this kind of exercises, this type of uh, problems as exercises, but then you will think that sir is giving everything as exercise. So let me do this. Okay, so first we say that uh, it is closed under the product. So closure. What do we need for closure? We need to take two elements uh, of uh, AHA inverse. Yes, the common mistake we make here is like this. We take uh, let A H A inverse and we take like this B H B inverse belongs to this is how common mistake is made. Right? This is not true. Right? But we change instead of changing this element what sometimes uh, I have seen what we make mistake is we change this. So A is fixed based on A, for every A we can have such a subgroup, if H is a group and so we take A H1, A inverse and A H2, A inverse, let us be this uh, in A H, A inverse for some H1, H2 in H and then we let us take product, of course it is very easy that is why I give as exercise but nothing to give as exercise here it does not even qualify for an exercise a h1 a inverse a h2 a inverse this is equals to a h1 by associativity we have this so we have a h1 h2 this becomes identity and then we have a inverse so this is an element of h and this belongs to a h a inverse so closure is done right because since h is subgroup since h is h is given to be a subgroup uh, h1 h2 in h 
h1 comma h2 in h this implies uh, h1 h2 product also belongs to h so h1 h2 belongs to h we have this is an element of h and therefore uh, this is an element of a h a inverse okay next comes uh, inverse Right, so what is uh, let us take an element let a h a inverse belongs to a h a inverse then what is the inverse we have to show that inverse also belongs to this so what is inverse of a h a inverse uh, we can take this as one element right we can take this as an x and you can take this as y what is x y inverse y inverse x inverse so this is a uh, a inverse inverse and a h inverse which is uh, nothing but a inverse inverse is this and this is h inverse a inverse now this is also an element of uh, a h a inverse magic why because this is an element of h so since uh, H is subgroup of G, since H is subgroup of G, H belongs to H implies uh, H inverse belongs to H. So because H inverse is in H, so this is an element of A H A inverse. That's very easy. So uh, this is a subgroup. Now next is what is the relation between H and A H A inverse? So our basically our target is to show that the number of elements what we are going to use today uh, all these are exercises very very easy exercises so this video lecture is very easy you can just quickly go through it no need to watch it again if, if you watch at least once of course then uh, that matters uh, so what we want to show that it it is same the, the order of if h is a finite subgroup of G then order of H is same as order of A H A inverse so they have same number of elements so what we need to do is uh, how do we show that two sets have same number of elements in fact those both are group subgroups but we don't use the property we just want so if H is a finite subgroup order of H equals to order of A H A inverse which is clearly we can see but we need to give one one correspondence so we need to define a map so this is our next step Uh, let G be a group, H be a subgroup of G. So, in fact, we are going to prove more, and A belongs to G. So, define. Um, define psi from h to a h a inverse by psi of h of course natural way to define this map is uh, a h a inverse once we have an element of h we can give an element of this a h a inverse so this is natural way what do we have to show we have to show that psi is 1 1 and 1 2 if we show that psi is 1 1 and 1 2 and if h is finite then number of elements here is same as number of elements here but what we are more we are going to see let us check whether this is an homomorphism or not in fact whether it is an onto isomorphism or not so then uh, we verify that psi is an onto isomorphism so one one onto and homomorphism so even more onto isomorphism okay i at every stage you I suggest that you pause the video, try to do it on your own and then uh, see if you are getting it or not. So for your own practice, do not do not just watch this kind of exercises as a video, right. So we show, show that psi is first, uh, we show that psi is 1, 1 and 1, 2, okay. So, okay, let us, so first claim we show that psi is 1, 1. So we well define also it follows from the same way but uh, it is given the map is given we have to show that it is 1 1 so for any for 1 1 what we do we take two elements from H 
right we can also define map from here to here if it is 1 1 and 2 we can also define map from here to here so for any h1 h2 in h let psi of uh, h1 equals to psi of h2 let psi of h1 equals to psi of h2 for some yes for suppose uh, this is equal then what we show so that uh, h1 equals to h2 so this implies uh, a h1 a inverse equals to a h2 a inverse multiply by a inverse on the left on both sides so we have h1 a inverse equals to h2 a inverse multiply by a on the right on both sides from right so we have h1 equals to h2 so this is one one that way you go above so that is a uh, well defined -ness. so psi is a one one function we can as well as i said we can also define psi from a h a inverse to h by this is also how we can define psi of uh, a h a inverse the elements of this is of the form a h a inverse equals to h so it can be defined in both ways so let me keep this i don't want to remove this line so you can also define like this but what we are verifying is this we are verifying okay uh, let me add one page okay so next is uh, we show that psi is on to and on to is very clear because uh, for on to what we do every um, element in the codomain has a pre-image so range is equals to uh, the codomain that is what we show so we take an element here a h a inverse so let us take an element so let uh, y belongs to a h a inverse then y is of the form then y equals to a h a inverse for some h in h right we can directly take this one no need to introduce y but this is just to understand okay suppose i take one element it is of the form a h a inverse for some h in h because it is in this set uh, but as soon as we have a h a inverse we have h and we have got h that is our h we needed here in the domain so so then then this is h is in h and what is psi of h psi of h equals to a h a inverse which is equals to y hence uh, y is on to oh sorry hence psi is on to okay uh, here we can say that uh, psi is one one thodi jagah banate hain yeah one line is enough okay good how did you yes uh thus psi is one one if you want to go well defined we go back this way okay so one one on to the done next is uh show that psi is a homomorphism So all these are trivial exercises i still recommend that uh, you do it on your own psi is homomorphism remember where is psi from psi is a map from h to a h a inverse and it is defined by psi of h equals to a h a inverse for h in h and this is how it is defined we show that psi is homomorphism so what we do take uh, two elements here yes so let h1 h2 belongs to h now what is psi of h1 h2 this will be a h a h1 h2 a inverse the more easier way is to go from the other side psi of h1 h2 psi of h1 psi of h2 so yeah we just say otherwise uh, for problem solvers it is good to see something which is not there we have to split we know what is psi of h1 psi of h1 is a h1 a inverse psi of h2 is a uh, h2 a inverse so what we do here so we we just we introduce something which is not there 
this is what how we see in between the lines so now once we have introduced e we have e can be written as uh, a inverse a so this is and then we can take this three right and then this three a is to a inverse so then that is uh, this is equals to a h1 a inverse a h2 a inverse which is nothing but uh, psi of h1 psi of h2 yeah so it's a uh, onto homomorphism onto isomorphism in fact so thus uh, this h is isomorphic so hence we can say that uh, h is uh, isomorphic to because it is onto isomorphism if it is just isomorphism we cannot say that it is isomorphic because it is on to h is isomorphic to a h a inverse and this is true for all a in uh, all a in g right fix one element then we have another subgroup like this um, of course if the group is abelian then it is going to be h only but right it makes sense so if uh, h is finite then we can talk about the order if it is infinite of course both will have infinite order because we have one one correspondence so if uh, h is a finite subgroup of g and uh, a belongs to g then what we can have conclude is uh, order of h is same as order of a h a inverse right and uh, this is what we wanted let me make a box somewhere here okay so fine and uh, similarly this can be done as for a inverse h a also so so similarly the same exercise exercises above uh, can be carried out can be shown for uh, can be done for a inverse h a right similarly just uh, a h a inverse instead of that we can just replace by this so they have same number of elements which we are going to use uh, in our lecture today so now we are going to introduce something which is called a double coset easy yeah huh? coset is too difficult na it is easier than uh, coset which we call it it's a double coset so let g be a group and uh, a and b be two subgroups of g a b b two subgroups of g right so what we introduce for uh, when we have two subgroups we can introduce a relation we can say that two elements are equivalent two elements are related not equivalent right now for x y in g define x is related to y if uh, y equals to a x b so if y equals to a x b for some of course you can see from the notation you can guess a belongs to a and uh, for some b belongs to and b belongs to b so if there exists a in a and b in b such so that y equals to a x b then we say that x is related to y right so this relation is also important for us given a and b are subgroups we have y equals to x b for some a in a and then we have seen this also okay right so whenever this kind of relation is defined what is the next step yes you got it right next step is uh, so next step the relation defined above the relation this defined above is an equivalence relation
So the relation is an equivalence relation that is what we have to show. Let me introduce one more page and it goes above there. Okay, it's an exercise I just state it as lemma, but we know don't be scared about by the name lemma. It's just an exercise. So equivalence relation what we show first is uh, reflexivity. Uh, so first we show the relation is reflexive. So before uh, we show reflexive, let us have a look at the relation again. So what relation requires first of all uh, two subgroups of G. Then two elements are said to be X is related to Y. If Y equals to X B for some A in A and B in B. So here we have to show that X is related to X. right? And uh, this is uh, true yeah, because A and B are subgroups. Subgroups are there, so identity is there. So how do we show this? X is related to X. Since A and B are subgroups, since A and B are subgroups of uh, G, E belongs to A and uh, E belongs to B. So x we can write x equals to e x e, right? So this is uh, x equals to e x e, which is x again. So okay, so this is the thing. So hence x is related to x, right? We sh we should be able to write y equals to a x b, where a is in a and b is in b. So then we can write as e x e x as e x e. So then we say that x is related to x like this. So x is and second one is uh, next is symmetric symmetry or the, the relation is symmetric. So we are given uh, we have to show that x is related to y implies uh, y is related to x. So x uh, is related to y this implies y equals to a x b for some a in a and b in b but then uh, we can write as uh, a inverse y equals to x b but this implies uh, a inverse y and multiply by b inverse b inverse equals to x or that means uh, or x equals to a inverse y b inverse where a inverse is in a and b inverse is in b why this is the thing because since a and b are subgroups so when a and b are subgroups if a is in a a is in a so a inverse also is in a b is in b so b inverse also is in b so this is because they are subgroups so this is true so this implies uh, y is related to x so the symmetric uh, the relation is symmetric then the relation is transitive this is transitive so for transitive what do we show so we have x is related to y and let us say y is related to z we have to show that uh, x is related to z this is what we have to show so x is related to y implies uh, there exists a let us take a1 in a and uh, b1 in b such that y equals to a1 x b1 and uh, y is related to z this implies there exists a2 in a b2 in b such that uh, y uh, z equals to a2 y b2 okay so now right uh, we have to show that x is related to uh, z so now start with here z equals to a2 y b2 and then uh, write the value of y so y is uh, a1 x uh, b1 
b2 so this is a2 a1 x and then b1 b2 right so this is an element of uh, okay so this implies uh, so this implies um, x is related to z because i can write z as some so this is some a3 x b3 where what is a3 a3 equals to a2 a1 this is in a and b3 equals to b1 b2 which is in b uh, since a and b are subgroups so, so a and b are uh, subgroups because they are subgroups it, they are closed so if i have two elements the product also is an element some element a3 otherwise uh, we cannot write like this okay so the relation is an equivalence relation so we have shown that it's an equivalence relation what comes next is uh, equivalence class so what is the equivalence class so the equivalence class for any x the equivalence class of for any let us take x in g with uh, respect to this relation is given by so this is given by so let us denote the equivalence class by box x right this is a class of x and this is what it is all those elements y in g said that uh, x is related to y right so this is all those elements y in g such that uh, y equals to a x b for some a in a and uh, b in b right so for some for some means if i take any a in a and b in b then this type of element is uh, in equivalence class of this so i can write it do not get confused i can write is uh, x a x b such that a in a b in b do not get confused by here for some and here i am writing this so this means it is in uh, it is same why because uh, all those y which can be written like this it pick up any a in a any b in b right a x b call it y or not a x b is in e, in the class of uh, x so I just simply write AXB so that A is in A and uh, B is in B. Then what is this set? So this set we can write as uh, because A in A, X is fixed here. So we write like this AXB. So this is called where, so the equivalence class, the equivalence class of A, the equivalence class of X in G. Uh, is a x b equals to a x b such that uh, a in a and b in b or we can say that given by this given by this is called is called the double coset right the definition is called a double coset of uh, a and b in g right right coset we write like this hx left coset we write like if h is subgroup and x is any element right coset we like write like this hx and left coset we write like this xh so what is this if a and b there are two subgroups a x b that is called double coset right so this is the definition of uh, double coset it's very simple then uh, even coset axb so this is uh, something we need let me introduce one more page here yes okay yeah so once we have this let us see what is next okay so now we determine the number of elements in this double coset so I think that is probably the end of uh, this lecture, very short video. So we determine, so next we determine the number of elements in this double coset with respect to the cardinality of A and B. So when A and B are finite uh, subgroups, then what are the number of elements in AXB? That is what we are interested in. So next, uh, 
we determine the number of elements in the double coset AXB when uh, A and B are finite subgroups. So this is the lemma. Let A and B be finite subgroups of group G. Let A and B, the last lemma, again very easy, all these are exercises today, just like very simple verification. A and B are finite, uh, let A and B be finite subgroups of of a group G. Then, what is order of uh, A X B double coset? It is nothing but it is order of A, order of B, and then order of A intersection X B X inverse. So it is just like similar to what we have seen, something like we have seen, right? order of hk equals to order of h in the first unit we have seen this order of k upon order of h intersection k and this is very very similar to that and in fact we are going to use this result there and in this so that is why we needed k but what is k here as you can see this is h and this is our k so for that we have h and k are subgroups so to show that h and k are subgroups a is a subgroup of course, B is a subgroup but uh, what is K? We will take K as X B X inverse. So we take K as uh, X B X inverse so we have to show that X B X inverse is a subgroup given that B is a subgroup so, but that is what we have done first we started with the right? X B X inverse if B is a subgroup if B is a subgroup then for any X X B X inverse is a subgroup. So this is why we have uh, done this exercise before. So that we can use it right now we can just state it here now we know this is a subgroup okay so let now let me remove uh, okay let me keep this no problem so it is just a hint that what we are going to use okay let us uh, do the proof right so first we show that uh, this is the step first we show that order of uh, AXB equals to order of uh, AX BX inverse right we have to show this okay yeah why we have to show this because this is my H this is my K so order of H order of K but order of K will be order of XBX inverse but that is same as order of B here we have seen, yes, this is why I marked, order of H is same as order of A H A inverse. So, K we can write as X B X inverse. Anyway, let us do it, it will be more clear as I as I see, if it is not clear so far. So, first we show that these two have the same order. So, when two sets have same order, finite sets, when we talk about they have same order, what we do is we give a 1-1 one -one correspondence between this. So, we define a map, so define, we know what to do, so define. And map also we don't need to remember you can just clearly make it out from this so define a map T from from where to where from a x b from anywhere you can define from this to this also so from a x b to a x b x inverse by natural way to define will be an element of this will come here in the in the argument what is the argument then a x b equals to and how do we have to define of course when we have when once we have a x b we can define to be a x b x inverse so quite natural you see so this is an element of this clearly seen once we have a x b in x yes for uh, a x b in uh, a x b double coset a x b yeah so the map is defined like this then what we have to show we have to show that t is one one 
we show that t is one to one. So one one to one man. So let uh, we write like this a x uh, this is a mistake we make I wanted to show you what kind of mistake we make so people write like this a x b a y b yeah this is how the common mistake we make even I have to think so yeah, what is changing what is not changing you can see this element is fixed what elements will change they, they are coming from sets for some a and a and some b and b so this a and b are changing x is not changing so don't replace this x by some y and show that hence this implies x equals to y a y b is another coset a x b is another coset so do, do not make such a mistake so where do we start when we have to show t is one one we start with two elements in a x b two elements in a x b looks like this a1 x b1 equals to t of a2 x b2 of course the proof is very simple so what is this by definition a1 x b1 x inverse equals to a2 x uh, b2 x inverse right and nothing to do multiply by uh, x on both sides from the right so a1 x b1 equals to a2 x b2 yeah t of a equals to b uh, t of a equals to t of b implies a equals to b this is what we have got so uh, t therefore t is 1 1 next what we have to show t is on 2 on 2 also is very easy t is uh, on 2 so what we take we take an element here so let y belongs to let y belongs to a x b x inverse so then y is of the form then y equals to a x uh, b x inverse for some a in a and uh, b in b because elements of this looks like this but once we have a in a and b in b then uh, then we can say that uh, then a x b belongs to a x b because a is in a and b is in b and not only that and apply t and t of a x b equals to what a x b x inverse and which is y so thus t is on to uh, hence t is a bijection from a x b on to a x uh, bx inverse and therefore we can say that uh, therefore the order is same because a and b are finite groups so the order of this is uh, order of ax uh, bx inverse this is same right so now uh, we know this is a subgroup bx bx inverse so clearly this is where we write so clearly x uh, bx inverse is a subgroup of of G since uh, B is a subgroup of G this is what we started first exercise of this lecture right first uh, where we started so B is a subgroup then this is same and since B is finite since uh, B is finite what more we have they have the same number of elements in fact they are isomorphic we know so they have same number of elements order of B is same as uh, order of uh, X B X inverse right and uh, okay so I added one more page it starts from beginning whenever I write okay so that we know that this thing P W K T. let me write W K T. I I like it uh, but don't write during, during exam like this so we know that a uh, good practice we know that uh, uh, if H and K are subgroups H and K are uh, finite subgroups of G of a group G then what is order of H K then order of uh, H 
k equals to order of h order of k upon order of h intersection k so here you can take uh, h equals to a and k equals to x b x inverse so if you take this then what happens so order of h k a and k x b x inverse equals to order of uh, a order of x b x inverse upon uh, order of a intersection x b x inverse but this implies just now we have proved just now what is this one one correspondence we have proved right yeah order of this is same as order of a x b so order of uh, a x b equals to order of a and what we have started this is a subgroup x b x inverse and order is same as order of b so this is same as order of b and uh, order of a intersection x b x inverse yeah this is what we wanted to prove let me make a box and we are done here and yes we are done for the lecture also so next lecture we will see the second second part of Silo's theorem okay good see you tomorrow i hope this is clear just repeat uh, go through the video whatever part you want to repeat you can repeat these are all simple exercises do not just watch it please try to do it with pen and paper that will uh, improve you right okay see you